Hi everybody, I'm Michael Wozniak. I'm honored today to be here with John Laval. Thank you. Hi John. Thanks. Um, so John is the president of the SNLP, the Society of NLP. Um, could you please, John, in a few words, uh, tell us what the SNLP is? Sure. The Society of NLP uh, has been around actually since the 70s. When uh, Richard and John started NLP, they, they set out to set up the Society of NLP. It's been existing since then. Um, different owners now, of course, and things like that, you know. So under the Society of NLP with Richard Bandler, what we do is we process the, uh, the certificates with license agreements and things like that. There's always been questions about, you know, does the society own this, society own it? The society owns certain intellectual properties. Um, mostly, uh, at least with Richard, we have the society logo uh, with Richard Bandler underneath it. And we have, uh, you know, we have the license agreements and we have licensed titles, which are registered trademarks. And so um, in order to be able to do that, you've got to be a trainer with the Society of NLP with Richard Bandler in order to use those things. That's, that's, that's really quite simply the way it works. Okay. Yeah. And for example, what kind of contents are uh, protected by, uh, by this license? Well, it's, it, the license really does protect the titles and the logos and things, but then there's, this, then there's the subject of the subject matter, basically. Okay. And, uh, you know, since NLP was started, there's been lots and lots of people's ideas about what they think encompasses NLP. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it really goes like this. The content, because, because people think that NLP is in the public domain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not in the public domain. Okay. Um, because it's, it's most of the information that's out there is in books, written books. And those books then are copyrighted. Okay. So that information is under copyrights. So here's what this means. It means because if, if you go on the internet, for example, and you download some bootleg books and information, things like that, and then you start to, to use that information, you're basically in, in a copyright violation, yeah. actually, okay? Now, you know, and I, I've had discussions with others uh, about this and some, some of the uh, other uh, leaders in the field, let's say, and, uh, and they also understand the same thing. The problem becomes when, when people believe that NLP is in the public domain when it, it truly is not. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that is in the public domain are the three letters, yeah. NLP. And that's primarily because it was difficult to trademark those three letters way back. And I wasn't involved then, but I understand what happened is because it also, those three letters also serve um, other properties, natural law party, uh, things like that, you know, um, uh, natural language processing, yeah. you know, out of computers. So they, so they all share NLP, which made it a little bit difficult to, to, to trademark the three letters. Yeah. That's the only thing that's out there in the public domain, really. Um, there's always going to be a question about the name, neuro-linguistic programming, um, but th th that doesn't usually become an issue unless people are really teaching things that are not neuro-linguistic programming. Okay. Uh, to be, make it easy, and, and, I've, and I've told people this over and over again, is that uh, I wrote an article that, that pretty well explains it. I've had some people say, can I translate that article and put it on my website? And as long as I know who they are, I say, yeah, absolutely, go ahead and do that. Um, that article is on the website called NLP is Not Therapy. Yeah. And in there, I pretty much explain the technology. Uh, you know, it's, it's all about education. It's about teaching people how to use their brain. Yeah. So uh, it explains the differences. Uh, that's why I suggest people go if they want to get yeah. more information. Yeah, because today there are many people who try to put NLP in the medical field and to make it actually a therapeutic tool. Yeah. Well, see, what happens then is so you have applications yeah. of NLP. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so for example, we actually have the Medical Society of NLP. Mm -hmm. now, now, that particular person who's our trainer, he trains doctors, but on communication skills, yeah. for example, okay, and things like that. So, but that's an application. Here's how, I, here's how I describe the field in itself, or the technology. Let me say mm -hmm. the technology. You have two basic parts of the technology. You have the basic skills, you have the skills of NLP, yeah. okay, and I'm going to say, as far as I can tell, no real s new skills have been developed, mm -hmm. as far as I know. The skills yeah. that were developed have been developed. There's really not that much that's new. Second part of the technology are the applications of those skills. So, for example, we have persuasion engineering. Okay, that's a, sell that's a sales and business program. Okay? That's an application of the basic skills. Okay. Okay? Um, you know, uh, we, have, uh, we have teaching excellence, which is a book Richard just came out with, with Kate Benson. That's an application 
of the basic skills. Mm -hmm. Okay? So most people don't make the distinction. Problem is that when, when people learn a technique, they think that that is NLP by exactly. itself, and yeah. it's not. Mm. Okay, so, so if someone teaches you, uh, you know, the phobia, the phobia technique, that's not just the only thing. That's, that's one application of the basic skills. Yes. We have people teaching golf, how to, how, to, how, to, how to be a better golfer using NLP. Yes. That's an application of the basic skills. Mm -hmm. So what happens with most people is they go out there because they learn a technique, and they see the technique really works well, and it does, until the first time it doesn't. Yeah. And the reason why the first time it doesn't is because those people do not have the skills mm -hmm. to recognize, number one, oops, there's something I could do differently here, and then do something different. Yes. And uh, so without the skills, just teaching the techniques really, really is uh, not very useful to people. We teach the skills first, and then we teach some of the applications so that people have an idea about that. And it's fair enough that if they're sitting with a client and all of a sudden they don't know what to do next, they can create their own technique right then and there because they know exactly. all the basic skills, yeah. you see. Yeah. Um, and that's what makes a good neuro-linguistic programmer, actually. Yeah. That's what I like to say, that NLP is not really a set of techniques, but it's more also a way of being and a kind of intelligence that makes you create the technique for the client. And this, is, this makes of NLP a very amazing tool, actually. Yeah, it's all about how the brain works and language yeah. and uh, then what you can do with that. Mm -hmm. So, and there's loads, loads and loads of, loads of things you can do with NLP, really. I, mean, I, I was fascinated by it years and years ago. I've been doing this for more than 30 years. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, the, the way to recognize whether or not, you know, someone out there is, knows what they're doing primarily is, I just tell them, listen, just look for someone who's trained with the Society of NLP. They'll have the logo on their certificate. It'll say licensed practitioner, licensed master practitioner, licensed trainer, mm -hmm. you know, neurolinguistic programming and things like that. And, uh, and that should give them a real good clue. If someone claims to be mm -hmm. a licensed practitioner and you're not sure about it, it's very simple. Just ask them to show you their certificate. Yeah. Just have to show you the certificate. If they don't have a certificate, well, I can't find it, I would be suspect of that. Mm. Or they can also ask, because sometimes I know there are some schools who put the logo of the society and sure. they are not entitled to do it. Sure, sure. Okay. So I want to look for the logo. Yeah. With the, you know, it's like a spiral thing on there, and it'll say Society of Neurolinguistic Programming on it. And underneath that, it'll say Richard Bandler for the people that are doing those trainings with us. Yes. And, uh, and that's the best way to make the distinction. If they don't have that, you know, I, I have had, just, just so you're aware, uh, I and mean, this was in France, but I don't want to name any names. We did have yeah. someone who counterfeited the seals yes. and was making their own certificates with the seal on it. Yes. Hmm. You know, they were not forging Richard's name, thank God, but yeah. all of those people who ought to go back and get their money back from whoever that is. Yes. You know, hmm. because uh, they were duped, quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. Hmm. And, and, and the person who did it had no right to be doing that. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you got to be careful a little bit. So, yeah. you know, make sure it's the, that logo with Richard Bandler under it. And, uh, you know, and uh, that if, there's, if they're claimed to be licensed practitioner, licensed master practitioner, whatever, neurolinguistic programming, trainer, whatever, show me your certificate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you. If you want more information about NLP, about pure NLP, you can go to www.purenlp.com. Right. Also, www.richardbandler.com. That's right. If you want more information in French, you can go to www.optimistra.com. And you will find everything you need for trainings, also for translated trainings, because we're also translating Richard Bandler, John Laval, and Kathleen Laval's trainings in French. So you can find everything on this website. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, France. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.